Hey everybody, it's Sherry, and I'm back with the Legend Actually podcast. Y'all, it has been so much going on. Today, we're going to talk about those housewives that got the boot from Bravo. You ready to get into it, y'all? Let's do it. Okay, guys, so as you know, Mondays were normally my recap days, just recently for Real Housewives of Potomac, then prior to that, it was Married to Medicine, and you know, I initially said I wasn't going to do Real Housewives of Potomac, but because of what was going on, and I wanted to bring you guys the good tea you know, what was really being talked about in those Bravo streets. I did that. I did recap the finale and then the three-part reunion. Matter of fact, you can go watch my video from last Monday where I kind of combined part two and three, wrapped it up and talked about some of their cast changes. Okay, honey, who knew that that particular reunion would take off the way it did? It has everybody buzzing about the outrage the outrage of the way that Candace Diller Bassett was done, Dr. Wendy Osefo, the double standards, the colorism. Child, we could go on and on and on. And so with that being stated, that's why I had jumped back on Real Housewives of Potomac. But we have wrapped up and we have now decided before that, I had said I was going to start recapping Martha's Vineyard Summer House. Y'all, I watched it. I had my notes. It's just not my jam. I think it's not giving what I want it to give. I don't know if it's because it's a younger demographic. Um, and I don't know if it's even that because I do watch the other Summer House but I've been watching that for many seasons and they do seem just kind of as a different vibe. I don't know if it's because when I watch Martha's Vineyard, I'm kind of like feeling like I'm looking at my kids. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it may be that I start recapping Summer House Martha's Vineyard, but today we're not doing that. Mm -mm. Today there has been so many housewives that have been let go. We're going to talk about that today. And I think, but I'm going to put in the community tabs. I'm sorry, the community tab. And I want my actualizers to kind of help me out. I'm going to put some options of shows that we can fill our Monday time slot with until Bravo brings back another Real Housewives franchise. I don't believe Martha's Vineyard is going to be my jam, guys. I just don't. And you know, that's always subject to change because as things develop, if I think it's something that you guys want to hear, I'm going to recap and I'm going to bring it to you. But as of now, mm -mm, I think what I want to do is I kind of want to take Mondays as Monday Chats with Sherry. And we can cover everything from what's going on in Bravo to what's going on in pop culture, other shows, things that have happened. Um, it's not going to replace our Saturday pop culture segments. I know our lineup has been very not steady lately. Life is life and Bria is um, in the process of getting a new place and, you know, she's getting settled. I was on vacation. And so life lives. I don't think there's many content creators out there that haven't had to step away for a minute to let life life, right? But we enjoy what we do so much. And I try to make sure I get on here at least on my Mondays. That's my day. And then um, we are eager later in the week to get to Married at First Sight. It is so crazy, y'all. All my MAPS watchers put in the comments, what are y'all thinking with the whole train wreck that is Married at First Sight Denver? child that's gonna be for thursday <laughs> but i'm gonna stay on script for today y'all i do want some feedback so i am gonna put in the community tab some options and take a poll 
on maybe what you would like for me to uh, possibly put in the recap section or if you want to keep it at Monday Chats with Sherry where you have a chance to give me some topics you want to discuss on Mondays. I'm always open for feedback, so we're going to do that. But y'all, let's talk about these housewives that Bravo is giving the boot to. Some I fully agree with. Some I thought, mm, couldn't we have squeaked out another season to see how it goes first? So let's get into it, y'all. So last week, The Real Housewives of Potomac, that stirred up quite a few announcements. Um, Candace Diller Bassett actually made a decision not to return. There was murmurings that she was let go, only to find out, y'all, she is expecting a baby. And so I fully believe that it was her choice to step away so that she can have a healthy pregnancy. So we're just really, really happy for Candace and Chris. Considering particularly this was a rough season for Candace, um, the way that the show ended with the fight and, you know, basically Giselle wanting to blame her for uh, Deborah, who was Ashley's friend, that whole debacle and fight, uh, trying to blame Candace for that when, in fact, that was really her way of defending herself. It was hard to watch, y'all. So I fully support Candace taking a um, step back so that she can have a healthy baby. And I believe that she will be back to the franchise. I, I From what I understand and, and listening to Andy on his podcast, it does appear that she has not been fired, that it was sincerely her decision. And that leads us to Robin Dixon. <laughs> she didn't have the same fate, guys. She was legitimately fired and in my opinion in my opinion rightfully so Robin on not just this season but the season before this one there were things in the blogs in the streets honey <laughs> all of us about Juan Dixon her husband that he had been um, affiliated with a woman where he had from Canada that he paid for her hotel room where in which he went to the hotel to pay for her room, you know, when the scene where Mia was being messy and she was saying, you know, you could have called over the phone to help her if you were trying to be a good Samaritan. You know, the fact that he went there, y'all, let's be clear. Juan just wants to cheat in peace. Now with Robin being fired, I think he's going to get that opportunity. Um, it was the woman at the hotel, woman he was spotted with at the laundromat, you know, his affiliation with a, um, a fellow coach, Coach Bree, a lady at the nail salon, child Shelby going on. And any time that Robin would reach out to Juan on the show about how the ladies were coming at her about his cheating allegations or the fact that he got let go from his job and that she may have had a hand in it the lawsuits, honey, he was giving her nothing but his hind part to kiss. He did not want anything to do with the show. He certainly wasn't trying to love her up or support her through it all. He legit was annoyed by Robin and just in, in seasons before that, y'all, he had stated if it was not for his sons that he would not be with Robin. And child, if, if, if ever a man's actions would tell you that, his certainly do. He did not show up at the reunion like the other husbands to sit behind her and support her when a lot of her storyline this season was defending the things that, you know, he had been accused of. So good riddance, Robin Dixon. I think that was a good move on Bravo. And then child was alleged that Naneka Ehim is also being let go. Listen. NECA gave nothing, okay? I mean, I'm seeing people in a lot of the groups I'm in for Bravo saying they agree. You know, one and done is all she should have got. She did herself a disservice. I mean, you know, her storyline was basically to come in and be Wendy's enemy. Why? You know, why? Why? And, and, and the things that they were arguing about 
being that it was something that was basically a part of the Nigerian culture, um, something that was taboo and dark. What a shame. What a shame. What a literal shame. Okay. Um, I, you know, I don't know even how she would come back on another season and make it right. You know, Wendy's made it clear on the reunion that though she's accepted her apology, they could at best be cordial. And, and she had a whole season if she had taken any time to really delve into her story more. You know, the things about her trying to have a baby that was touched on very lightly. You know, she talked to her husband like a dog. Um, and she just gave nothing. She was a flat character that was used to try to get under Wendy's skin. And when it didn't work, I mean, her job and mission were not accomplished. You know, Ashley, the whole thing, it fell flat. And then it was stated that she had one last shot. You, if you watch the reunion and you see Mia tell her when they're backstage, you know, you need to speak up more. Honey, when she had, you know, um, a little bass behind her voice, some energy for Wendy, it again fell flat because it made no sense. Talking about Wendy was lying through the whole show. Man, what exactly was Wendy lying about? Mm -mm. Neka, you stated that Mary to Medicine uh, was looking at you. You can try it over there if you want to. Now, if you couldn't do any better than what you did over at Potomac, my advice to you, don't even go on over to Mary to Medicine, honey. Dr. Heavenly will eat you up and spit you out. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Going back to the house and rebrand. It didn't work. You're not good for reality TV. You're not interesting. You know, and even when you try, it just doesn't even sound right. So, one and done. Bye. So, that was Real Housewives of Potomac. And I'm calling for Miss Ashley Darby to be added to that list. <laughs> Put in the comments if you agree. Ashley, time has been up, in my opinion, for the past three to four seasons. It really has. Her messiness and her bandwagon hopping on. And she she adds nothing. Michael Darby and her fake divorce. Um, it just, it's not giving. She doesn't add anything. You know, if anything, this thing with the fight should make them really reconsider Ashley. No one really made her take any kind of accountability, which was an outrage to the fans. And child, there is a petition going around on Miss Giselle Bryant to have her removed. Now, last time I checked, there was three petitions. And your girl signed one. Actually, I signed two. If I get my hands on that third one, I'll sign it as well. Don't know if it'll work, y'all. But in my opinion, Giselle can go. And at the very least, without Robin, what is she going to give, y'all? She doesn't give anything. But if you think the relationship between Giselle and Jason from Summer House was true, y'all, I can write her a better storyline than that. Mm -mm. Really and truly, it's time for Giselle and Ashley to go. I would honestly like to see Potomac do what New York did and just... I mean, keep Wendy, keep Mia, keep Karen, but get us some new blood on there. Let Ashley go. Giselle go. She's miserable anyway. Honey, let her go heal. Did y'all see how her face was screwed up through that whole reunion? Mm-mm. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I mean, mm-mm. I just, she's, she's, she's just bitter. She wants her way. This is not just your show, ma'am. And you don't give enough in my opinion, to be the anchor of the show. I think that job belongs to Karen with some good uh, storylines from Miss Mia Thornton because she's giving. Now, she will definitely be bringing up on the next season. That's going to be her season. She saved this one. You had to give it to her because I hopped on because of Mia. So let's just, you know, see what the next season gives. More to follow. There has been speculation with some of the things that Ashley has stated, I have a little clip from Ashley that could indicate she's backpedaling, trying to save her job. Season was very challenging for me. I appreciate your support. The There were things going on in my personal life that I wasn't able to share, unfortunately. 
Um, and then even some of the dynamics in the group were a little challenging for me. More on that a little later, but I just wanted to check in. Thank you all for your positivity. Um, this has been a great journey. Who knows what's to come on it, but I love y'all and I appreciate you so much. Season. I don't know y'all. You know, it seems like every day something new is coming out. So very well, we could get <laughs> that message soon that Miss Ashley is getting the boot as well. But we'll see. Then they announced Crystal Minkoff, y'all, from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I like Crystal. You know, I, I, I'll agree. She wasn't one of the louder ones. But Crystal, for me, she gave that Beverly Hills lifestyle. You know, she was the one that threw a lot of the lavish parties, the theme parties at her home. She's the wife of Robert Minkoff, who's the big director. You know, he's a affiliated with The Lion King and some of the other big movies. Very successful. You know, she she has that Beverly Hills mm, thing, but she does it with a quiet confidence. She, um, and, and it's not like she has not given. I mean, she has shared with the masses her struggles with her eating disorder and her body issues, you know, her obsessions with being skinny. She even mentioned it at the reunion. It's something she struggles with. And I believe that her sharing her story certainly has helped some people. Um, you know, she also bought some diversity in Beverly Hills. She wasn't shy talk about talking about her Asian culture. Um, her and Garcelle uh, would support each other in the whole, you know, um, basically talking about the being a minority in, in a sea of, you know, white faces and, and, and how difficult it might have been. She gave. I mean, maybe not like some of the other stronger ones, but I think Crystal had another season in her. I really didn't. I'm not going to say I didn't understand it. I'm going to say I would have liked to have seen Crystal get another season. So I think that she could have turned it around this season. I mean, she certainly didn't like Anne-Marie. And, and the most I've seen her get hype was at Anne-Marie, who was another one that got fired. Though rightfully so. Anne-Marie Wiley needed to go, y'all. She, again, there was an opportunity because Garcelle Bouvet is a wonderful addition to The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Added an African-American woman to the cast, one that fits in, can hold her own, in her, you know, has her you know, strong presence. So she was amazing for the show. And then to bring in Anne-Marie, you know, I always say there is room for all of us, baby. But Anne-Marie just couldn't figure out her lane. She came in as Kyle's friend, but she didn't come in. She wasn't likable. There was just nothing likable about her. Everything from trying to diagnose Sutton to her coming for Crystal the way she did. I don't doubt y'all, however that Crystal did say that the ladies were uneducated or dumb. It, that, that, that sounds a little Crystal-ish. But I think she came in trying to get her moment the wrong way. The most likable moment Anne-Marie had was when Crystal got sick and she kind of stepped in. You know, it was... Noted that she may have been less than honest about her profession at first, telling Crystal she was an anesthesiologist when in fact she's a nurse a anesthetist. I don't know, I, you know. And then, child, they in them Twitter streets, honey. She's back and forth with Miss Crystal, and honey, the funny the gag is, y'all. She was responding to a, a account that was not even Crystal's true account; it was a fan account. Anne Marie. Let it go, boo. You were let go, and rightfully so. Again, y'all, it's not for everybody. It's good when these friends of or new housewives get an opportunity, but it just, it just maybe not have maybe not the cast for you, not the time for you. It just didn't work. So Anne Marie, I think, was a good one to say goodbye to and give the boot to. Then, guys, we're gonna go to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Y'all. 
So we're talking about the ones that they let go. We know Candy Burris was let go, child. She, you know, acted like she went on to do other things. However, she was in fact let go. Or, okay, it's alleged she was let go. You know, she didn't say that. Andy didn't say that. But that's what I think, child. She took a long time for her to get a contract. You know, I, Candy's going to be okay. She's on tour with Escape. She has a million other things to do. So be it. Was it time for her to leave Real Housewives of Atlanta? Absolutely. At least two, three seasons ago. Good to see her go. Good to see her go. I'm not mad. Um, they also said goodbye to Marlo Hampton. That's one I disagree with. I think that she had another season in her too. Marlo has been a friend of the show for years. And a formidable friend of the show. She just got her peach last season. That was a very low rated season, but it was not Marlo's fault. It was not to let her go. I don't see why. I really don't. Uh, I really feel like she should have had another season. Given the right other cast around, Marlo could have really given. And so to let Marlo go, I, I didn't understand that one, y'all. Uh, they also let Sandra or Sonia Richards Ross go. That I do understand. Now she's just had a baby. I'm sure that would have been part of her storyline, but as endearing as I think she is and she is she just wasn't a good fit for the Real Housewives of Atlanta she just didn't fit in with the ladies she didn't fit in with the platform I could see her maybe doing her own thing uh you know uh, not necessarily a spinoff because I don't know that she's that interesting but her and her family maybe have their own show maybe going over there with Carlos King somewhere child I don't know I think she's likable I just didn't think she fit Real Housewives of Atlanta what do y'all think Put it in the comments. Um, no. It was confirmed that Kenya's coming back because at one point we were wondering, you know, Kenya hadn't got her contract or at least she alluded to the fact that it wasn't finalized. Honey, now that announcement has come out. Miss Kenya is back. We know they've asked Portia to come back, honey, with all her stuff. Don't know how that's going to go. I don't know if y'all heard, but uh, Simon is dragging her to court trying to get a lot of that ahead of a lot of that by asking a producer to accompany her in court giving up storylines regarding him he doesn't want any filming in the home that he's purchased he really doesn't want to be a part of her storyline so honey it's getting messier by the day by the time they really start filming because from what i understand they haven't yet because it was stated by her that she hasn't met all of the cast who knows what this is going to be you know, there's still speculation on whether Sheree is coming back or not. It has not come out for certain that she is. And there has not been an announcement just yet that she's been fired that I have seen. And so we will see. Um, there have been some new ladies added to the lineup, but I will not speak to those yet until we get a confirmed lineup. And then I want to talk about each one when we have a confirmed one. And I, they're starting to, um, when they get ready to start filming. So we'll more to follow on Real Housewives of Atlanta. And then from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, we had the firing of Miss Monica Garcia, which again, I think was a mistake. Now, I understand how do you move forward when one cast member pisses off the rest of the ensemble cast? Who's going to be willing to film with her, with her being the reality Montice of it all and her, you know, leaking their their storylines and, and putting it in the blogs and, you know, talking about their secrets. And I get it. It's just that whew, she saved that show. Honey, they were even um, up for an Emmy. I mean, that doesn't happen that many times, y'all. It was, it was such a dramatic finale. Well done. She held it down. The reunion kind of fell flat. But I really feel like one more season with her, they could have brought someone in as a, you know, I don't know how they would have made it work, but I really think they could have. I know Mary Cosby's coming back full time. Some people are excited. Some people aren't. I say Mary can be good if she comes back and wants to be on the show. That's the thing. Mary is funny. She's rude as heck, but 
she can help the show if she has the attitude that she wants to be on the show. If she's going to play along and actually, you know, film and not just be so off put by everybody, just, you know, hurl a bunch of insults and then go about her way. You know, is she really going to be engaged with the cast? Then Mary Cosby is a good bring back, if you will. Salt Lake City is not one of my favorite franchises, but I did watch. I definitely did watch this last one simply because of the storyline with Monica. So I don't know, guys. I think that as a whole, there's probably more revamping that needs to be done. We've got Real Housewives of Orange County. I haven't heard any shakeups just yet with them. Doesn't mean that there aren't going to be. Um, I do know they're bringing Alexis Bellino on the show because she's now dating John Jansen, who is Shannon Bedore's love interest. That'll be interesting for sure. Then you have Shannon's drama with her DUI. You also have Karen's. You know, we didn't talk about that. That didn't come up in the reunion because I don't know that it happened. I don't, the timeline of it all, I'm not certain. But I'm sure that's going to spill over into next season. So, you know, we, we, we've got some things coming together. Overall, the last seasons of these shows, you know, New Jersey's coming. There's a lot of uh, buzz about a fight between Jennifer Aiden and I can't remember the other castmate, but some kind of big, big fight that broke out there. Teresa's still not willing to film with Melissa Gorga. There's things there. Something tells me New Jersey is going to be your next big shakeup because the whole thing when you have all of this dissension and, and animosity where one doesn't want to film with the other and, you know, you have a divided line group, it, it doesn't seem to work well. It, it just throws off the whole chemistry of the show. So I'll be interested to see what New Jersey does and kind of what that does for the future of Real Housewives New Jersey. My theory, you heard it here first is there's going to definitely be some cash changes there after their season that's coming up. So guys, I'm going to put a pin for now here. That's what I wanted to talk about today. I would love to get your feedback on these cast shakeups. The Bravo Housewives that got the boot in agreement. Not so much. More that you'd like to add to the boot lineup. Put it in the comments and let me know your thoughts, guys. As always, I want to say thank you. And I want to take time right now to tell you guys, my actualizers, our actualizers, how much I appreciate you. We have made our goal to 3,000 subscribers, y'all. And honestly, I am so humbled and so excited. This started as an idea of me and my daughters so that we kicked around for a year or two. And then BravoCon, I got a chance to attend. And then spoke with a lot of the ladies I met there and just got the feedback of, girl, just do it. And that's what we did. We just did it. We started back in November of last year. And here we are now, three subscribers strong and growing and learning. And so, y'all, I just want to say thank you. We're going to keep coming back. We're going to do a little bit of um, rebranding and, and getting our lineup back on its normal course and bringing you that good content. So just want to say again, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, we deeply appreciate you. Please do us a favor. Just take the time, you know, to hit the notification bell. So when we do drop new content or we go live that you guys can join us and get that good content first, take some time to, to put a little something in the comments. Let us know how we're doing. What do you think about the housewives? The, those that got let go, those that took a pause. What do you think, guys? Who else would you like to see on that list? You know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Put it in the comments. And don't forget to go over to that community tab and give me some feedback on what are we going to do on our Mondays. Are you good with Monday chats with Sherry? Let me know. Let me know. Um, join us on Thursday when Bria and I will be recapping, discussing, going off on Married at, first, married at first sight in Denver, guys. Maps Denver. So join us on Thursday. This weekend, we will be in Atlanta at the Black Heart or the I Heart Black Effect Podcast Festival in Atlanta. Those of you guys are coming out, come on out, see us, say hey. 
give us feedback if you want, you know, chat with us a little bit, photo ops, whatever you want. We're there to network and learn and, and get better. So come by and say, hey, if you're coming out, if you haven't got your tickets yet, there are still some available, I believe, some general admission tickets. So come on out and see us there. And as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Sherry with the Let It Alleged Actually podcast. Thank you, actualizers. Keep coming back. Love you. Bye.